In this problem, you're given a situation about selling peanuts, and you've already determined the cost function C of n, the revenue function R of n, and the profit function P of n. Remember, the profit function P of n equals the revenue function R of n minus the cost function C of n. Notice we're already given the profit function P of n equals 0.5n minus 110. Next, we're asked to use the profit function P of n to complete the table below. This will give you an idea of how much you can earn selling n bags of peanuts. To save some time, we'll do this using the calculator. And there are a couple ways to do this on the calculator, but we're going to use the home screen after we enter the profit function into y1. So we'll press y equals, and now we'll enter our function, though we do need to enter a function of x. So we'll enter 0.5x minus 110. So notice how our function p of n is stored in y1 as a function of x. Now from here, we're going to go back to the home screen by pressing second mode, and now we'll find our function values from the home screen. When n equals 500, we're trying to find p of 500, meaning we're trying to find the output when the input is 500 bags of peanuts, and the output would be the profit. So we'll enter y1 of 500. To do this, we'll press vars, right arrow, enter. y1 is already selected, so we'll press enter again, and then in parentheses, 500. Notice how this is just like function notation. We'll press enter, and now we'll enter y1 of 1,000. And because we already have y1 on the home screen, an easy way to find y1 of 1,000, which is actually p of 1,000, would be to press second enter, which brings up the previous entry, but now we can edit the entry. So we can left arrow and change the 500 to 1,000. Close parenthesis and enter. Here's the profit when n equals 1,000. Next we want to find the profit when n equals 1,500. So we want to enter y1 of 1,500. Again, we'll go ahead and press second enter, which again brings up the previous entry, but we can edit the entry, so we'll change this to 1,500, enter. These are the first three function values we're looking for. Let's go ahead and record them. Using the same procedure, we can find that p of 2,000 equals 890, and p of 2,500 equals 1,140. Now this looks pretty good, but the owners of the carnival inform you that you will have to pay a self-employed income tax on your earnings of 12%. When you take this into account, you determine your income is actually your profit minus 12% of your profit, or a better way to state this is that your income is 88% of your profit. This can be written as a function i of p, where i is the income and p is the profit. So i of p equals 0.88 times p. Again, the 0.88 came from taking 100% of your profit, subtracting 12% of your profit, which leaves you with 88% of your profit for your income, where 88% as a decimal is 0.88. So now we're going to calculate the actual income, given you have to pay 12% of your profit. So this table is the same table from the previous slide, and now we'll calculate the income or I of P, which equals 0 0.88 times these profits. So notice how these profits now become the inputs into our income function. And again, we'll find these function values using the graphing calculator. So now we're going to press Y equals again, press enter down to Y2. Our new function is 0 0.88P, so we'll enter 0 0.88X and now we'll find these function values from the home screen. So we'll go back to the home screen by pressing second mode for quit. Now remember our new function is in y2, so when p equals 140, we want to find y2 of 140. So we'll press vars, right arrow, enter. Notice y2 is 2, so we'll press 2, and then in parentheses 140. Enter. So i of 140 equals 123.2, or $123.20. Let's go ahead and find a couple more of these. 
and then I think it will be safe to assume you can find the remaining function values. The next input P is 390. Because Y2 was the previous entry, we can press the second enter and then edit the input from 140 to 390. Enter. So this is the income when the profit is $390 and we want to find Y sub 2 of 640. So we'll press second enter and change the input of 390 to 640. Enter. Let's go ahead and record these three income values. And again, we didn't show how to find these two function values, but I assume using the calculator you can, they come out to 783.2 and 1003.2. So notice how this is your actually income given these profits. So notice so far it took us two functions to actually find your final income for selling the peanuts. After taking everything in consideration, you decide you need to have a function that tells you your income if you sell n bags of peanuts rather than taking these two steps. Your profit you make is 50 cents per bag of peanuts sold minus $110. Your income is 88% of your profit. So your function of n that would give you the income is I of P of n, which is a composite function. Notice how the input into our function I is the profit function. So we'd have 0.88 times the profit function or 0.88 times the quantity 0.5n minus 110. So what this composite function will do, it'll allow us to input n, the number of peanuts sold, and it'll give us the final income here in one step. Let's go ahead and verify this. So we'll enter this composite function here in Y3. So back to the calculator. We'll press Y equals, enter, enter, down to Y3. We have 0.88 times the quantity, 0.5N or 0.5X for the calculator, minus 110. Close parenthesis. And now we'll find these first three composite function values using Y3. So go back to the home screen, second mode for quit, and now we'll enter Y3 of 500, Y3 of 1000, and so on. So vars, right arrow, enter, Y3 is in three, so three. The first input, which is now N, is 500, which we'll enter in parentheses. Notice how the income does match the income we found above. Next we'll find y sub 3 of 1000. Because y sub 3 was part of the previous entry, we can press second enter and change the input from 500 to 1000. And notice how this income matches the income we found above. Next we want to find the income when n equals 1500, which would be y3 of 1500. So again, we'll press second, enter, and change the input from 1,000 to 1,500. And again, notice how the income matches the income from above. Let's go ahead and record this. Now we didn't find these two function values, but they will match the income above. So again, what we've done here is we found one function or one composite function where we're able to enter n, the number of bags of peanuts, and in one step find the final income, which finds the profit and then removes the 12% self-employment fee. I hope you found this helpful.